What's those six words I taught you? The six words that'll put you out of business is I've always done it this way. I'd like to come back here. You know my rule. Got to go be somewhere else. Yep. Got to go work for somebody else and establish that before you can come home. And uh, if, you, if at some point uh, it would come up, there may be room in the future on the ranch. I'm going to miss it. Okay, now you're actually gonna get some action because that cow is out. Go back where you came from. Yeah, there you go. Okay. If you wanna be in the cattle business, Go to Oklahoma. Ready? Ranching to me and my family is a way of life. It's what we love to do and we've done it for a long time. When you work in a family business and you work on a family farm, it can be very challenging. Where am I going? We're gonna go to the pond, bring him this way. Well, I don't know where the pond is, but all right. You gotta step out of the role of dad or grandfather because you have a business to run. Can't stand still, have you figured that out yet? My dad is a very hard worker. I don't know that he'll ever retire. Determined, a little stubborn. Oh yeah, a lot of stubborn. <laughs> He's very methodical and a very analytical business owner. He loves his cattle like they're his children. They're not only his business operation, but they're his livelihood. Good morning, girls. Kenzie's like the mini girl version of him. Kenzie always like followed him, like growing up, like just a little mini me running around. Kenzie's a very headstrong individual. She gets it from me. Back up. Back off. Ambitious, stubborn. Kenzie is easygoing, happy. She's very good about being there when you need her. She's determined. If she sets her mind to it, she's going to do it no matter what. We do a lot to take care of them. There's a lot of long days and a lot of early mornings. It's not a nine to five job. It's a seven day a week, 365 days a year. That's my responsibility. Bertram Cattle established about 2005 with a partnership between my dad and I. Currently right now we have between five and 600 head of commercial black and red Angus cattle here in Stillwater and in Glencoe. We are able to have a, a very sustainable cow-calf operation to better utilize the rangeland and pasture, native pastures lands that we have. Person we bought most of our land just north of here, Max Downey. He was already implementing a lot of these sustainable principles before people thought about sustainability. So part of the legacy of this ranch was in, in order for our contingency of our lease is we have to continue the same conservation practices that Mr. Downey had. They were making sure they didn't wash out half their land into the waterway next to them. They were rotationally grazing, managing the forage, managing the grasses to eliminate erosion. They were protecting it. I've learned from them how they did things and the farmers that were before me our environmental sustainability is one of our most important issues because if 
the land isn't sustainable, if the grass doesn't grow back, then we have nothing to run our cattle on, we lose our livelihood. By stewarding the land, it rewarded you and your family and the generations to come. You learn to live to leave a legacy. And if Kenzie decides to take over the ranch or any one of the girls, that's part of the contingencies that they will continue the conservation practices that this man had that he established for over 50 some years. So do we have a number for tonight? I think 18. Mike, okay, so all, I think all five kids, Brandon, Mike and Susan. Mike and Susan, Jean and Jake. Jean and Jake. Hamburgers are already thawed out. We just need to get the veggies ready, make a salad. Um, should be good. It's been pretty crazy around here in the house, you know. All of a sudden, Kinsey graduates. At the same time, uh, this, this wedding is, you know, sneaking up on us really, really fast. Less than 60 days. Hey, Jim, what's up? Are you on your lunch break? I've been engaged for a little over a year now to my fiance, Jim. We met in the Oklahoma State Animal Science Computer Lab on campus. I am looking at these wedding koozies with the design that I showed you the other day. Can we maybe switch the light blue to orange for, you know, our alma mater? <sighs> yes, we can switch the light blue to orange, I guess. <laughs> we can do that. The first time I saw Jim, I thought, mm, he's kind of cute, I'm looking for something. Maybe I'll just go over there and talk to him and see how it goes. Come to find out he was very interested in me and just a few short months until we get married. Today I'm figuring out what to do for centerpieces. Maybe a, a tall base. What did you just say? It's boss, not base. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I thought you said it sounds boss, and I was like, this is not 2012 anymore. <laughs> Both of us knew on our first date that we were made for each other, as cliche and gross as that sounds. August 6th will be here before we know it. It'll be strange to have just us at the house. My dad remarried this past August, and Kendra has two girls, Grayson and Matlin. I have a twin sister named Carly and a younger sister, Avery, who's three years younger than me. You know, it's really nice to just have them coming back home. Hey, girl. How you doing? Okay, you Let's do buns. Okay. Uh, buns in that one. Yep. We just love it when all five kids are able to make their schedules align and come out to the house for dinner. Need anything, Clay? Can you help? No, I'm not you. Okay. okay. Home is everything. It's where you feel comfortable, it's where you feel safe, and where you know you can be yourself. I still like going out to the farm and stuff. It it brings back a lot of peace and just a lot of memories. Yeah. I don't think ranching would be for me to run. I'd like to have a horse. I could do a little horse in the future. <laughs> That'd be fun. I don't know about a whole ranch, though, but. Well, horse would be fun, yeah. some dogs. Kenzie can, Kenzie got it. Yeah. For our, our two groups to kind of come together to have fun and make some memories together, it's special. Bertram Beef. So Kenzie, busy week this week at the ranch. So yeah. shipping two loads Tuesday, one load Wednesday. The two uh, loads out of Glencoe two on, loads, wins, on two Tuesday? Two loads Glencoe Tuesday, one load Wednesday. We'll update the inventory tomorrow. You know, the summer's going by really, really fast. You look at those memories and think about those different things. I mean, you're always going to have those. Nothing's going to take those away from you. So you're taking it in a little more because um, it's going to be gone. My dad and my grandpa have a rule. You have to work for someone else before you can come back and work for us. You can't expect to be provided a paycheck if you don't provide something to the company. I was there at one point, 22 years ago, 
What part of the business am I gonna add value to? I'm seeing producers, and ourselves included, diversify somewhat into outside businesses in order to build a more sustainable foundation for their business. That takes care of all the inventories. On the inventory manager, we're gonna to have to create a sold category. Right. Farm Data Services began 41 years ago. We are what we call a management accounting firm. My dad, he said, well, why don't you come home? And I said, well, why don't you put that in writing? I didn't ask if I could come home. He made that offer. And now what my dad does at Farm Data, he brought a crop insurance business and an appraisal service. Here I am over 20 some years later and now I'm running the ranch in our accounting business. Family's always worked and been an important part of our business. Good morning. What I do at Farm Data is I enter data in bank statements and reconcile loans and make sure that the statements match what we have in our electronic record books. And got the inventory up to date. So Bertram Cattle's done and all filed. And then I got three different clients done with their monthly records. If we aren't adding value to our clients, we're not going to be in business. You can't eat out of the same trough that fed you, and so you need to bring an added addition to the business. She understands where that comes from and how it's earned. Something I'm really passionate about and one of the reasons I was interested in the legal field is estate and succession planning. I recently graduated from Oklahoma State University with a Bachelor of Science degree in Animal Science. The typical thing you hear when you're an Animal Science major is, oh, do you want to be a vet? No, I had no interest in going to vet school. Law school is not the most typical path. The average age of the American rancher is almost 60 years old and times aren't the same anymore. The oldest son might not want to take over the ranch. Maybe it's one of the daughters or maybe none of them do. Probably in the last five years uh, at our business at Farm Data Services, there's been this emphasis on transition planning. That is something that, in my opinion, every farmer, rancher, and even those not in agriculture truly need to continue their legacy and have a plan for their finances whenever they pass on. And so I am headed to Washburn University School of Law to become an agricultural attorney. Hopefully I get through law school, pass the bar, so I can bring something back to farm data and the farming operation itself. Hey. How was your day today? Busy. I love working with my dad and grandpa. I'm gonna miss just seeing their faces, seeing them work and do what they love. Yeah. I've got 52 days till the wedding, so a little over a month. It'll go quick. Gonna miss working here with you. Well, you can work remote. Okay, my, my rate's go. gonna go up. We'll have a discussion. <laughs> I never got to tell my mom that I'm a made it to law school and that I'm going on a full ride. I really think that she'd be proud of me helping people while doing what I love. Tina was a very caring, compassionate individual who loved life. She never met a stranger. Uh, if you were sitting by her on an airplane, you, you're gonna get talked to. And uh, she loved her girls. She was just always so loving, my mom. She loved everyone, didn't hold a grudge. I got a phone call and uh, she asked me to come home. She said she didn't feel good. In December of 2017, it was a normal day like any other. Went to school um, in the afternoon and my dad called whenever I got back from my ag class and said, Something's wrong with your mom. We're gonna take her to the ER. She doesn't feel very good. They took her into uh, to the OR uh, for what we thought was a normal heart blockage. Um, and we finally found out it, it was called uh, SCAD, Spontaneous Cardiac Arterial Dissection. Uh, I basically stayed with her for three days. 
I didn't come home. <laughs> On December 10th at 10, 10 a.m., Tina left. I think I got all the humor from mom. <laughs> I think also her like strong will, I guess, and just her ability to like make people feel they're welcome, like they're loved and like they're cared for all the time. Yeah, I would say her kindness is what I think I received most. My hair is naturally curly like my mom's was, so Avery would use, uh, whenever I wear my hair natural, she, she always likes to give me a hug and just kind of pat my hair because it reminds her of my mom. I love Kinsey for her curly hair. After um, our mom passed, I would go in there and be like, can I like hug you? Can I like hug your hair? Like, I love it. <laughs> At her funeral, the flower shops in town were all sold out. Um, so when people went to order flowers, they had to go in 60 miles away to Oklahoma City. It's great to see that my mom impacted a lot of people without even realizing it. You know, what do, what do you do? Where do you, where do you start? Girls were set to graduate in six months. So he's a dad, wanted to be all things. The first couple of months were really hard. Um, I kept showing my cattle, um, the best show I ever did. Right before the show, my dad was gone, and I took a piece of duct tape and wrote mom on it and put it around my show stick, and I actually won the Breed Charlet for that show. We walk in the ring, and, and there's a lot of excitement, and, and I had no idea what was going on behind the scenes. All I was worried about was keeping my steer calm. It was a loud arena, so I kept whispering to him, making sure he was okay. I kind of blacked out. I wasn't hearing what the auctioneer was saying, but they kept going on for a long time. You know, I hear, you know, 5,000, I hear 10,000, and, you know, 15,000, and another good friend of mine's a ring man, and, you know, I heard him yell out, don't stop raising the bid until you hear me. And everyone stood up and clapped, every, every single person. 19,000, 20,000, 21,000. I heard the auctioneer say sold, um, and my dad waved his cowboy hat. The bidding finally stopped at a little over $22,000 for that animal that night. Um, you know, just remarkable. To see what that community came together and did, not only for Kinsey, but that was from for the family. It was very surreal for the community to show up for me like that. They were all there for me and my family in a time where we desperately needed some, some love. We face some adversity in our life and you're a very strong person. Um, I sit back and I'm in awe. You know, I haven't lived more than 10 minutes from you. Is there something we've not done this summer that maybe you want to do this summer? I want to go fishing. I want to go fishing. One more time. The pond's always here, and so is the pole. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. Thank you for the moisture that we've received this week. Father, continue to bless us this summer and uh, let us be safe as we travel on these roads. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Ranching itself changes every day, but I think the part of ranching that won't change are the ranchers. Okay guys, you guys ready? We're gonna go gather the uh, the bottom steers and get them up here on the home wheat and then we'll move the cattle in the bottom pen. Main goal is uh, nobody gets hurt. We'll do it. Okay. 
We love our animals. I can speak for every single rancher in America. I look at them to see what those needs are for that animal. Cattle are domesticated. They're not wild animals, so they rely on us to get fed. They need water. If it's frozen water on the pond, I need to go break the ice or they're not gonna be able to drink. If that happens to land on Christmas, Thanksgiving, Easter, or any of those other holidays, then I have to go take care of that for them. Jared, go over there and uh, set those gates. As I get new hired hands, as they come into the ranch, it's my responsibility to teach those things and show them those things about animal welfare. We you gotta keep the animals well taken care of and that's what we do. You know, the average age of the farmer, I think, is about 62 years old. Um, and one of the biggest challenges is how do we get new producers in this business? Um, how do people like Kinsey get into this business? Everyone says we are the future, and we really are, and we can't take that responsibility lightly. But that doesn't mean you have to go on the farm and live in a shack the rest of your life. You know, I think a lot of us as farmers and ranchers get caught up in the day to day, and we're doing our thing. Maybe sometimes we just need to sit back and say, what do you think? There's a lot of things that I would tell my generation in agriculture. You can really make it your own and that doesn't prohibit new ideas from coming into play. Six words that'll put you out of business is, we've always done it that way. And if you don't try some of these new things that are out there, how are we going to be a good steward of the land? So this is the software that we continually use that we're going to monitor where the cattle moved. So, so they're all down in the end of the... Yeah, they're yeah. right behind my house. This last fall, the OSU and the Environmental Protection Agency approached me about a project in regenerating the land because I'm in the Stillwater watershed area. We have some areas um, on the property that I live on. They have some bare areas, so that may be a path where the cattle decide to walk all the time. And we know what that can do. That can beat down the areas, and then we get a torrential rain and it floods it, and you have those areas that need to be regenerated. See this big hole right here? Mm -hmm. And this big area right here on the map? If you look at the map, see that, that that's all dirt. Yeah. The goal would be here to turn on this virtual fence and outline that whole area and the cattle wouldn't go in that area. We collared all the cattle with a GPS. They don't hurt the cows. It's a very humane process. Our number one concern is taking care of the cattle. Basically by using the software to control the grazing of the cattle, it'll assist us in regenerating some of these pastures that are more marginal. Yes, that's right. I consider myself still a young farmer. I'm a middle-aged man who's still able to learn and listen. Maybe this will work. You know, maybe it won't, but it's worth a try. Did you ever think we would ever see technology like this? Oh, not, not to that degree. The technology has allowed us to react quicker and adapt quicker to changes that are out there. Do more with less. That's great. Kinsey, did you come in my room this morning? Yes, because your alarm went off four times and you <laughs> hadn't gotten up yet. You set more than one alarm? That. Oh, I set like Well, nine. I set two alarms, but that's because I don't do odd numbers. I'm very close with both my sisters. We talk every day and we spend a lot of time together. Most of us get along most of the time. It's but a, I mean, it's we're sister sisters, fights. yeah. Yeah. So it's normal. It's gonna be weird not having you just like five minutes away. Yeah. Wait, how far is Topeka hour-wise? Topeka is three and a half hours from Stillwater and two hours from Marysville. Me and Avery can make road trips to come see you. Yeah, we'll have a spare bedroom for you guys to visit. That'll be fun. I'm excited for Kinsey. She's, she's doing a lot with her life right now. I know it's gonna hit me. Like the minute she leaves, I'm gonna <laughs> break down and cry. I think she'll still be around when we need her. Think of mom and wedding planning. <laughs>
I really do miss you her. You get so mad. I really do miss her. And you wish she was here for this. But me and mom would have had a mom. drag out fight about <laughs> me not wanting place to cards. have a guest book or place cards or. You she not have a guest book? No. Besides all the planning that you two would have fought over, mm -hmm. I'm sure it's hard not having her here to talk about yeah. wedding stuff. It'll be sad, but... She also probably has the best seat you could have to watch oh, yeah. your wedding. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be hard not having her there at my wedding. She didn't see me graduate college or even high school. She won't see me have kids if I decide to do that. <laughs> Um, so there's a lot of things she's gonna miss, but like Carly said, she's gonna have the best seat in the house. She'd be happy for you. I would think she would have loved Jim. Oh, she. I think she would have had a blast all with Jim. the time. She would love him. Mm-hmm. That's sweet to think about. Oh uh, yeah. I love Jim. He's so sweet. Ever since we met him, it's like the boy version of Kinsey. I'm so happy for her though. I feel like it'll be cool to see her get married first, even though I always tell her it should have been me. I'm excited to get married to Jim and start law school and everything, but I don't want to leave Stillwater, you guys. Yeah, 20 bucks says she comes back first 30 days. <laughs> I That's... wouldn't bet first 30 days, but I would bet in the first two months. Okay, I bet It'll first be 30 days. You bet the first two months. 20 bucks. <laughs> Now at your home, you want to go feed the cows? Sure. The, the pet cows. My cows are fed. <laughs> These are my cows. Your cows. <laughs> After losing Tina, didn't think I'd ever have that again. You know, I thought life was too busy. Kendra and I, you know, share a lot of common ground about different things for what's happened in her life and, and, and now my life. Look, they're waiting. <laughs> so much for running from the pasture. <laughs> we started off um, as, as friends because we both had a, a similar situation of losing our spouse. And it wasn't just about the way we were feeling because we were also trying to figure out how to help our kids through the situations as well. And then somewhere in there, um, we kind of realized how close that that kind of discussion had brought us. No, that's a, that's a bond that we have that a lot of people don't. I determined I was going to find what made me happy, and I was going to enjoy life, and it just feels good to to just be me. <laughs> Perfect. But they're all going to be spoiled. <laughs> Say that's what we're here for. You going to get my bulls eaten out of your hand? <laughs> don't bet on that. Kendra showed him how to relax and have fun. Uh, they go on vacations all the time. Just, it's like he's a teenager again. <laughs> oh, now he's scratching with the comb that's in your back pocket. <laughs> he's scratching his chin. As the kids get older and leave the house, what do we do now? She's like, you sit in a chair and relax. I said, I don't know how to do that. I'm learning how to relax and, and adapt. And we have to take a chance to see what that looks like, what it's gonna look like in the future. Life, as we've come to know, is gonna change at the drop of a hat. <laughs> so we're pretty good at just rolling and, and improvising, I think. No, I can't wait for my dad to walk me down the aisle. It's something I always dreamed of. It's old fashioned, I can do whatever I want, but I look forward to him kiss me on the cheek before he gives me to Jim. I'm the maid of honor. I'm the bridesmaid, just like the one after Carly. I just know that my mom would have the time of her life with Kinsey right now, just planning all this stuff. It feels like she's still here. <laughs> the cross. <laughs> I like it beautiful. Thanks. Straps are itchy. <laughs> You're There's gonna have nothing to do with it. And then see the back. 
Super pretty. Do to bustle it? Yeah, I can. I'm excited to start my new life with Jim. But he did say we might move back here someday. So keeping that, keeping that in, in the hopes and dreams, bug it. The Crocs are so cozy. Only you. They're my wedding shoes. Mm -hmm. Let me make your wedding playlist. <laughs> no. I'll do it good. I hate the playlist you make in the car. I'll do it good though. Mm -mm. At some point in my life, I got knocked down. And I'm so proud of him. He's my bestest friend. Tell him everything. Um, we spent a lot of time together the last five years. From the times in the show barn uh, to times on the road, and all those were meant for a reason. told me just to keep on moving, you know? Stuff happens that you don't expect. You can't forget, and you gotta just look ahead. You just gotta keep moving on and live life to the fullest every single day, because you don't know when it's gonna end. Life happened, and it can happen to any one of us. Things don't happen by chance, in my opinion.